So, you're thinking about running a seating depth test, but you either don't know where to start or you're afraid you're going to run into excessive pressure when you start loading into the lands. Today, we're going to try and find out if we see any scary pressure increases if we start loading into the lands looking for accuracy. Today, we're going to be testing multiple cartridge oil lengths in two different calibers while we look for velocity and pressure increases. When running longer cartridge oil lengths, the biggest concern in my opinion is the possibility of needing to eject around and leaving the projectile stuck in your barrel. When we start running a test like this, determining the max cartridge oil length you want to test is the first thing I would suggest you do. If you want to see how to do all this, I'll link a video series at the end of today's video, but we're going to look to see what kind of crazy pressure increases we see by doing this. We're going to be looking at some data in 6.5 Creedmoor as well as 223 Remington. For this test, I backed down my charge weights just a little bit to make sure we didn't run into anything that would spike our pressures too high, which if you're running a hot load, you may need to do as you move the projectile closer into the lands. Before I bought my Pressure Trace 2, I ran a test here on the channel with 143 grain ELDX and Reloader 16, and showed how the velocity changes we modified cartridge overall length. The x-axis here is in CBTO, but you can see as we move the projectile out of the lands, our velocity dropped from almost 2900 feet per second down to just under 2870 feet per second, after the moving the projectile a little over 50 thousandths. It would have been great to have the Pressure Trace 2 hooked up to see what was going on with pressure here, but it's a pretty safe assumption that the higher velocities were generated by higher pressures. Today in 6.5 Creedmoor, I thought we would load something quick and dirty, so we dropped our charge weight down to 40.6 grains of H4350, used the Fed 210M, and we're testing a CBTO range of 2.202 to 2.157 inches with the 142 grain Sierra Match King. I believe this will translate to a cartridge overall length of between 2.853 inches all the way out to 2.898 inches. The point where the projectile touches the lands is 2.882 inches, so we're really not going very far into the lands today, at least in 6.5 Creedmoor. So only 51 thousandths of total overall length tested, but this is what we got. Two mistakes here I made right out of the gate, though I still think the data is interesting, was I fired them from longest to shortest, and I didn't run any foulers to start with. The pressure and velocity of these longer CBTOs I'm sure would have been higher if it was sufficiently warmed up. There's only one shot per sample here, but overall I thought it was pretty interesting on how the pressure tracked the velocity, at least for the most part. Clearly more samples would have given us better data. Looking at the chart, we can see the highest velocity we saw was 2729 feet per second at only 56,434 PSI. Not really significantly higher, but it would have been much more interesting had we those first two rounds been on a warm barrel. But never fear, I believe 223 is going to give us some much more interesting data. Not to get too deep in the debate about 223 versus 556, but one of the reasons why folks don't recommend running 556 in the 223 chamber is the fear the projectiles are going to be into the lands, causing pressure spikes. In this test, we learned from our mistake and we started with the shortest CBTO and we already warmed up with some factory ammo. We can see on this chart the highest pressure is recorded at the CBTO of 1.775 inches. But where are the lands at? While measuring the touch point with a horny cartridge oil length gauge, I measured this at 1.850 inches. But looking strictly at the pressure data, I don't think we really start to see any interesting difference until we're about 10 thousandths into the lands. The initial distance between samples on this chart was moving in 10 thousandths increments, and then after I'd calculated we'd hit the lands, we started moving in 5 thousandths increments. Essentially, we wanted to have a little bit better resolution as we got into the lands to see if the pressure increased the further we got into the lands. But, at least for our test data, it doesn't seem to be that way. Even though velocity isn't super consistent on this chart, the pressure seems to be after we get into the lands. If we average all the peak pressures we saw from a CBTO of 1.7565 to 1.856, the average peak pressure of this load is 48,000 PSI. If we average the peak pressures from 1.861 inches to 1.891 inches, the average pressure is 51.1 thousand PSI. So, is it higher? Absolutely. But we're only talking 3,000 PSI here certainly a pressure change of less than 10%. Some of you I'm sure are going to be interested in what the cartridge oil length is, and for the 77 grain sear match king, you can basically add 0.496 inches to these measurements, and that's going to get you to coal. So our test today was from 2.252 inches, basically what would feed in a magazine, all the way out to 2.387 inches for this 223 load. For our application, again, magazine length is basically 2.260 inches cartridge overall length. So the majority of these needed to be single fed. But did changing our cartridge oil length change our point of impact significantly? We can't make any great conclusions with only having one sample per data point, but our goals here mostly were looking for pressure. But if we look at this entire group of 19 rounds, removing rounds 13 and 15 took our group from 1.6 MOA down to 1.2 MOA. Looking at our chart, these two rounds seem to be right in that area where we start to see the pressure increase from starting into the lands. 
and the rounds right after that seem to get right back into the group. So be aware if you're thinking about doing this, that's probably an area to avoid. Hopefully if you were nervous about deviating from the cartridge roll length that's published in your manual, you can see that this 3000 PSI increase really isn't all that dramatic, and if you adjust your load for this, you really shouldn't be all that concerned. If you'd like to see this whole tuning process from start to finish, check out this playlist right here, and I hope to see you come back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.